Hello everybody! Today I will tell you how to connect two or more routers to one network, use this trick to boost your Wi-Fi network signal or create one more access point within the existing network. We will consider two ways of doing it – with a cable or Wi-Fi connection. Here we go! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. Often people face situations when having one router is not enough. It means that it may be unable to provide the desired Wi-Fi coverage area. Some rooms or premises do not have proper Wi-Fi signal or need more ports to connect other network devices. This situation is well known to people who dealt with the task of building a Wi-Fi network in a large house, apartment or an office consisting of many rooms. If it happens, additional equipment has to be installed to extend the network to the desired coverage. And it's not that difficult, as it may seem. There are several options, which we are going to show in this video. The first variant is connecting two or more routers with a network cable. You will have to lay the cable from one router to the other. Doing it is not always convenient, but is the most stable and reliable way to get them connected. If you want a steadily operating network with high speed for a number of devices, the routers should use cable connection. The second variant is connecting the routers without cables by Wi-Fi. In this case, the bridge connection WDS is used, or the repeater mode. In fact, they are the same, but these settings are implemented differently in routers by different manufacturers. So here is the starting point. We have the main router connected to the Internet and it broadcasts a Wi-Fi network. We need to install one more router, for example, in another room or on another floor. This second router will kind of boost the Wi-Fi network provided by the main router and help to extend the same network so that it covers more distant premises. The second router can be connected to the main router by cable or Wi-Fi. Let's have a closer look at both connection methods. Most often, routers are connected by Wi-Fi, and it seems natural as it spares you the efforts for laying cables. In my case, the main router is TP-Link TLWR841M. It broadcasts a Wi-Fi network with the name Hetman Software. Please bear in mind that the router we are going to connect to in the bridge mode should be configured already. That is, the Internet connection should be up and running, with a Wi-Fi network being broadcast. There is a special detailed video on how to find your way through the settings. You can watch it by following the link in the description. Before you move on to configure the second router, it is necessary to change the settings of the main router's wireless network, so that the channel for this network will be static instead of automatic. For example, if your main router is another TP-Link device, you can change the channel in the settings by visiting the Wireless tab. In the field channel, Specify a static channel, for example, 1 or 9, whatever. Save the settings. Now that the static channel has been set, you can exit the main router settings. Let's move on to configure the router that will operate in the WDS mode. In my case, the specific model being used is TP-Link Archer C20. Go to the router settings. For starters, you need to change the IP address of the second router. You have to avoid the situation of having two devices with the same IP addresses within one network. For example, if the main router has the IP address 192.168.01 and the other router also has the address 192.168.01, the two addresses will be in conflict. Go to the tab Network – LAN. In the field IP address, change the last digit say, put 2 instead of 1. Or, as in my case, change it from 192.168.11 to 192.168.02. Save the modified settings. Why should you do it this way? You need to know the IP address of the main router which you are going to connect to. 
if it has the address 192.168.11, then the address for the router which you want to connect by WDF should be changed to 192.168.12. If the main router has the address 192.168.01, you should assign the other router the following address 192.168.02. It is important to have both routers in one subnetwork. Go to the settings again, but this time the IP address will be different – the one you have specified before. Go to the tab Wireless – Basic Settings. In the field Wireless Network Name, you can specify the name of the second wireless network. In the field channel, make sure you give the same channel that you have specified in the settings of the main router. In my case, the channel is 9. Now check the box next to Enable WDS and click on Scan. Select the network from the list that your router will get its internet connection from. Click on the Connect link next to the network you have chosen. Now, the only thing left to do is give the password to the main network in the password field. Type it and click on the Save button. After rebooting, go to the second router settings again. While you are in the main page, the Status tab, look at the wireless section. It should say Enabled in the line WDS status. It means that the second router has already connected to the main router, and now it is supposed to broadcast Wi-Fi. However, the Internet connection will be available by Wi-Fi only, and if you connect devices to the router operating in the WDS node with a cable, they will not be able to go online. To set up this function properly, you should disable DHCP server for the router which has the WDS bridge configured. That is for the router which is the secondary one in my case. It is also necessary to have its local IP address in the same subnetwork where the primary or main router belongs to. That is why you should enter the DHCP menu of the secondary router and disable this function. This is the last step in getting two routers connected by Wi-Fi. Find the right location to place the second router there so it falls within the effective range of the main router. Set the desired name for the wireless network and a password. We have already described this step in detail in our video about configuring Wi-Fi mode for a router, so I will leave the link in the description. How to build a network of several routers with a cable connection? There are two ways to connect several routers into one network with a cable, and they are as follows. The so-called LAN-LAN connection, that is, building a network consisting of several routers by connecting their LAN ports with the network cable. And LAN-WAN connection, that is, building a network consisting of several routers by connecting the LAN port of the main router with a WAN or Internet port of the secondary router with a network cable. Let's consider each one in detail. In case of a LAN-LAN connection, take two routers and decide which one you want to use as the main device. Usually, it is the router which receives the Internet connection cable from your Internet service provider. Use a network cable to connect LAN ports of the main router with the additional or secondary router. Let's suppose that we have already configured the Internet connection for the first router, so I will skip this step. If the main router doesn't have any Internet connection yet, fix this problem. Just watch our video about basic settings of a Wi-Fi router. Connect to the first device and check if it has DHCP server enabled. By default, it is usually enabled. To do it, go to the router settings, find menu DHCP, DHCP settings. If DHCP server is disabled, enable it. Don't forget to save changes. Then connect to the other device and disable DHCP server, because it will receive all addresses from the main router. To do it, go to the router settings, find the menu DHCP, DHCP settings. If DHCP server is enabled, disable it. 
In the section Network LAN, change the IP address so that it doesn't coincide with that of the main router. For example, change it to 192.168.02, because the main router has 192.168.01. Save. After rebooting the secondary router, it should be working in one network with the primary one, receive the Internet connection from it and operate as an access point. The second method of combining two routers into one network is with a network cable. In case of a LAN-WAN connection, use a network cable to connect the LAN port of the main router with the WAN Internet port of the other secondary router. Connect to the first device and check if it has DHCP server enabled. By default, it is usually enabled. To do it, go to the router settings, find the menu DHCP, DHCP settings. If DHCP server is disabled, enable it. Don't forget to save changes. Then connect to the other device. For the other device, go to the section Network – WAN and set the connection type as Dynamic IP. Save the changes. In the DHCP section, leave DHCP server enabled. If you are planning to use LAN ports of the secondary router, make sure that their IP addresses don't come in conflict with the corresponding addresses of the primary router. That is, if your primary router operates within the range of 192.168.0.100 to 192.168.0.199, it is better to have the secondary router range from 192.168.1.100 to 192.168.1.199, but always within the main subnetwork. Save. After that, a separate access point can be launched for each of the routers. If you did everything right, both routers will have an Internet connection, operate within one network and be able to access network devices. Those were all methods of connecting several routers to one network, wireless or wired. If you have any questions while you are combining several routers into one network, you are welcome to ask by posting a comment. Hit the like button below and subscribe to Hetman Software channel if you find this video useful. Thank you for watching and good luck!